So it's been about nine months since we looked at Rupert the Saramatum. So I'm gonna do a video all about the progress and a little bit about what happens when a leaf dies on an aroid. So let's dive right in, have a look at that update and see what's happening. So let's basically let's unpot him and see what we can find. Um, again, this is not what I recommend you do. It's going to be unhealthy for him, but I don't really m mind as he's been such a, an experiment for me, and, and we have got a lot of him. So there's one tuber that with the one that we just found on the surface. So we'll put that on one side. And let's get rid of this. Uh, let's basically just pull him out and see what we get. So that's soil inside is pretty compact so probably didn't do a particularly good job there um, and there aren't any tubers in there either so again not really as healthy as I would like so let's slowly try and uh, unpick this without damaging it and then I'll go and give it a wash so we can have a look at him um, now look there straight away there is the old tuber so that there that is the Rupert we know and love. So that is basically the, the shell of our tuber that we started out at the start of the year and it's ripped open. So basically this thing here, this large, basically casing here, this was, was Rupert and it was that big. And what it's done is it's grown from Rupert. It's grown one at the side here and here's the roots. It's grown another one in the, in the top of Rupert and another one here and it's also given us this one tuber so basically Rupert's used all of himself all of his energy up and given us four so let me just go and give that a wash and then we can have a, a bit of a closer look at that so there you go I've given him a little bit of a wash and you can now clearly see I've put that tuber back on so that was one that grew so what I really want to focus on is this shape here so this is our old Rupert and if we'd have carried on if we let this plant carry on if we let him go this would keep feeding the growth of this this and this and possibly um, because this is this now has got quite a lot of growth to go this would then start photosynthesizing and then it that would grow this one here and then this one up here which is another set of leaves would continue to grow this one and this one is going to turn into leaves and then that would grow this one so those three four if you include this one that fell off and a baby one there five is basically all coming from this nasty mess underneath which was Rupert which he's all used up now so Rupert effectively has gone and it's just his children left so you can really clearly see that this shape here as I keep saying this was our Rupert underneath. This is going to be the new three versions of him. And there's actually, I didn't, I didn't even notice, but if you see here, there's another one there and another one there. And this is how it basically works. Now we've, we've obviously messed it up here because we've unpotted him. Um, and I will put him back in, in soil to see what happens. But basically, you can see the exchange of nutrients. So this one, Rupert, feeds all of this new growth. And then these leaves, as they come up, they then put the energy back into these one, two, three individually. So really, I suppose, even though he's a bit of a sacrificial sauromatum, at least he's shown us how it works. Um, and you can clearly see that these are, you know, these are, these, are, these roots here have got, um, hopefully you can see it close up you can see that they've got this wrinkled effect and that pretty much says that it's, you know, it, it, that's usually a sign of um, contractile roots which can pull these things down into the ground. So with all that said then, he, you know, he, he has been a bit of a success because obviously he's done his job, he's fed his three babies, they're all growing up and then they will carry on and do the cycle exactly the same as, as you've seen all, all year with this one. So let's go and have a look at some other examples. Um, even though Rupert is, is as he is, I'm gonna put him back in the soil so we can follow his progress a bit longer. Um, but it's, it's, it's really been helpful just seeing you know, that, that stage there. So all of that extra, let's have one last look. 
this bit underneath so this empty shell this is our Rupert if you look back at the video you can see um, but that basically is 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 what's left of our, our Rupert so I'll put this back into soil now um, and then we'll move on and have a look at something else so while we are in here and we're looking let's have a look at this one so this is one of Rupert's brothers or sisters which has been I've already shown you this one earlier has been grown outside and this has done a much better job so you can see there it's got m many of these little offsets that have grown they've all got leaves on them um, and they're all feeding uh, as, as with Rupert but this one as I say has been left outside these big uh, petioles here are all feeding those tubers in there so when we have a look in that pot we'd have a much more significant sized tuber in there what we could do now is we could look at some really big ones that have gone down and we can have a chat about what happens when these leaves start to die so this is a very different case here so this is a saromatum exactly the same as rupert but it is a um a clone from mike clifford who's uh, mike clifford's rare plants if you don't know him a lot of people like me buy seeds off mike and he, he grows a lot of this kind of stuff now he found this clone in his garden and it, it was huge so it's got these huge petioles um i'll try and show some pictures on the the the, the screen of, of what it was like in the summer and this is how really the saromatum should run now rupert is just a test you know we kept him indoors we've, we've ruined his cycle in terms of the fact that he's not been outside so so he's not got the full growth so what we're looking at here is how it should be done so these are dead leaves so you know is that bad does that mean that the plants died so you need to really understand something called leaf senescence um, and that's where in, in a lot of plants, leaves will die, but the plant won't. And it usually, you know, it's for one or two reasons. So I want to cover off what leaf senescence is and, and then we'll dig these up. So this is gonna be quite a long section. So as I said, with other plants, senescence is, it's a natural process. It's kind of the aging and the, the eventual death of the leaf, not the plant. Now remember in um, things like Saromatum and Amorphophallus, this is one leaf. This is one giant leaf with lots of leaflets, basically. Um, and it's a, it's a biological process that allows the plant to conserve and recycle its nutrients. So basically, it, it takes nutrients back and the leaf dies and, and, and stuff goes back to the tuber. So it helps it prepare for like seasonal changes, um, environmental stresses, and it, it Pretty much it can be quite noticeable for us that grow aroids because obviously we grow aroids more so for uh, certainly outdoor aroids more for the foliage rather than the inflorescence so so what is it then so um it's the final stage of this leaf's life cycle and it means it's going to you know it's going to die uh, it's going to break down to its cellular components it's going to withdraw nutrients from this leaf and it's going to suck them back into the tuber to, to save them and then that's the death of the leaf now you see me a lot on this channel i i unpot things too early and sometimes you'll unpot things early because it's going to freeze sometimes i unpot it just for the channel because i know i've got lots of these to show um so you know the, the the longer you leave it the better to a certain degree so when we start um i can start unpicking this a little bit now so i'll pull this off and you can see that it's completely rotted and it's coming up easily. You can see there where it's just detached. I mean, this one was detached for quite some time. But here, um, for a certain amount of time after the leaf has gone yellow, it will have been feeding the nutrients um, back into the tubers that we're going to see. Um, and that's the bit you have to be mindful of is there's a given amount of time that you get from it going down to, to then it you know turning to like this this is mush now this has gone all the way back to you know this is really you know this is ready for composting right now so you know we can pull all of this out ready to go to the compost um, so I suppose in summary about senescence then um, so the leaf's fully fulfilled its role it's done all the photosynthesizing it's going to do the plant is getting ready for dormancy so um, in tuberous ones like this, aromatum and amorphophallus, then you know, the, that's what's happening now. They're getting ready for a time when they can't stay up or, or, or you know, because of the weather becomes inclement. Um, 
And then sometimes it might be that, that, that there's a problem like a drought or nutrient deficiency or some other changes in temperature. We're, we're not talking about that here. So, um, so what triggers it then? So there is a chemical reaction that triggers it um, and also the, you know, the, the temperature. So seasonal changes, any environmental stress, as I've already said, um, and it's hormones internally that regulate it. So that it releases given hormones that, that will, you know, that, that start triggering this, uh, this drop that we've got. So I suppose the reason I'm telling you all this is I don't want you to think that you should be unpotting things when there's green leaves on it. But I also think I've probably left this one too long. So there is a chance that some of these, if you leave them too long and the, and the ground is too wet, then you know you, you could actually be um, allowing your tubers to rot. So it's, it's a fine balance and I've got it wrong many, many times over the years. But the learning, um, if there is a learning from this, me digging this out, is that you should leave it as long as you can. Um, leave the leaf on the tuber as long as you what you can it's not going to look good it's not good if you're a cottage gardener and you want to have a lovely looking garden all the time because if you grow a lot of aroids you're going to have a lot of time when you've got a lot of dead leaves um lying on the on the surface but you know you have to do it especially if you're really trying to get a, a plant growing um my recent videos gorgonidium some of the Penelia, you know, I, I take them down early. Once they've grown enough, once I know that I'm happy that they've grown enough, I don't mind it too much. But if you can leave it um, as long as you can, you know, the, the, the better. Um, I've already covered them, but there's a few signs that you should be looking out for. Um, so the yellowing of the leaves is the first thing. That's when the chlorophyll is breaking down. Drooping or wilting, that's usually a common sign, but you have to be careful because that could also be underwatering or overwatering. Um, or, 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 you know, it's difficult when it's outside because obviously things will be getting watered by nature um, quite, quite often. Um, there's browning and drying up sometimes, so it's not too wet, but I, I don't see that that often. And then there's... Um, leaf abscission which is where le the leaves drop off um, and again i don't see that with things like sauromatum that much um, sometimes see that um, with some of the indoor aroids um, things like epipremnum and stuff like that but not not with these not with sauromatum and amorphophallus they, they do what you've seen here they just drop down um, there's a thing called programmed cell death or uh, PCD um, and that basically is where the, the plant releases chemicals that, that basically does do the killing that's that's exactly what what it what its job is um, which is a bit more in depth than, than this video um, and bear in mind I'm not a botanist I'm a hobbyist so I'm uh, if you want to look up that I'll put some information down below in the um, in the in, in the comments oh, sorry in the in the description of the video and I'll give you the research that I use for you know for, for these videos so let me try and get some of these big boys out so there's a that looks like a little one already so that I'll pop that over on one side so that's one little one oh my gosh so this makes Rupert look like a joke <laughs> so that's this that's got to be a, a kilo at least a kilo so we'll put that one on one side and then we'll wash it and have a look at it so these are going to be bigger. This is how Rupert should be if we hadn't messed around with him. Um, th these are big, big tubers now. And the great thing is here, I've controlled the, the feeding well. So what I've done here is, gosh, that is big. What I've done here is I filled this part at the bottom with um, uh, bone meal. So there's a little tube. You've got to be careful now because there's lots of little tubers coming out of here. Um, these are all breaking off. These are all tubers that you must save. So you'll see them better when I've washed them. But we're giving the, the soil a little bit of a fondle here, just to make sure there's, you know, that all of these little ones are coming off. And this, this is actually quite weedy in my garden now, Sarah Matten, because I've got so many of them. And if you think these are the, you know, look how big these are now. Um, this is what you would be seeing with Rupert if he was in the ground. Um, and it's, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing to be doing what we did to him. <laughs> but I think it's been good watching the progress. Um, you being able to see how, you know, how this process works, even if it costs me um, 
growth really of of of, of one of these uh, on a year so i think that's it i'm going to go through it a little bit more and then we'll wash them and then we'll have a look at um what they look like after a bit of a wash okay so now you can see a bit more clearly what we're talking about so um the these are chunky chunky tubers you know they're like i say they're I'm guessing without weighing them, um, you know, the, these are well over a kilo each. Um, good, healthy roots, um, you know, it, probably far too big for that little pot that they grew in. Um, and lots of little offsets, only about four or five, actually. I think I've left quite a few in the soil, a few more still attached to the surface, as you can see. Um, and there's no sign whatsoever of the tubers that went in the ground. That is it. That's what's left of the tuber so remember what you saw with rupert there was quite a bit of it left so it hadn't all been used up this has literally used up its entire previous tuber so this is how it should work this is a good example um that one split a bit there so that's probably had some you know i probably may well have left this a little bit too long in that little pot but um and on the top here you can see this ring here this is where the you know where the petiole split off and this is the new growth here uh, ready for next year so these will be huge and healthy um uh, ceramatum next year because they bear in mind next year this is going to feed another one and i'm going to get the same amount of growth so these will be even even bigger um but the these are are you know this is how it should be i can't stress it enough that what we've done with rupert is 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 really just for science it's just for us looking at what's going on so the points from this video um at this point we are letting rupert carry on um, but again, he's an indoor saramatum. He's not. He's not had the benefit of all of these nutrients and this outdoor living that these guys have had. But um, leave those leaves on as long as you can, and and they will pull back as long as this connection here, this outer ring, um, where the, the xylem and phloem really is working. That needs to go as long as it can. So certainly for the phloem to send energy back in, so it sends it back in from from photosynthesis the sugars go back into the tuber um this is all parenchyma cells um and also then once it's once it's started to senesce the leaf has started to senesce then it pulls back what it can to a certain point once this connection's broken that's it it's going to rot off at that point so it is a fine balance you've you, you know you've got to you've got to go with what you um um what you've got you know you, you can't know exactly what's the best time so the longer you can leave it the better um, and then you'll end up pretty much with tubers like this i hope you liked the video and if you did please give us a thumbs up it does help us to get our stuff in front of other people that might like it and obviously if you want to give us a thumbs up then why not subscribe to the channel down below have a great week everyone